When most people litter, guilt is a fleeting feeling. We've all heard the saying, out of sight, out of mind, right? Well, the reality of that is, whenever you throw your chip bag or paper napkin out of your window or your car, it doesn't disappear. It's got to go somewhere. And that's why we're here. I'm Abigail, this is Andrew. We're about to talk to you about the Dog River Watershed. The Dog River Watershed is 95 square miles and drains most of the water from the creeks, streams, and rain that falls in the city of Mobile. The water flows into Dog River from there to Mobile Bay and from the bay into the Gulf of Mexico. Located on the northwest side of the bay, Dog River is 7 miles long, has 125 miles of shoreline, and is a very popular place for families, fishermen, and boaters alike. But if there's one thing Dog River is famous for, other than a great place for fun, it's the staggering amount of trash and pollution located in the river. As more people move to Mobile, more land is cleared to build houses and businesses. The lack of vegetation due to the clearing has led to heavy erosion and sedimentary waste. Natural wetlands and swamps that once filtered the trash out of the water on its way to the river have been replaced with restaurants and shopping malls, allowing the pollution to go straight into Dog River and into the bay. Now that we have addressed the issue and its components, it's time to ask ourselves, what can we do to prevent or at least levy the flow of trash into our local waterways? And how can we get people involved? Well, we decided to seek out Baker High School's AP environmental teacher, Mrs. Stevens, for some answers to these questions. So one of the greatest problems that we have here in our city is with trash that ends up in local waterways. And the trash that ends up there can be things that are very common among schools, which would include things like chip bags and potato uh, wrappers or even Coke cans and plastic bottles are very common. And so what happens is when you guys throw those things out onto the, wa onto the ground, they are going to end up washed into local waterways. I think the first step is we always want to educate people. You don't want to throw things on the ground. You want to put them in the proper receptacle. But sometimes you do that, um, and sometimes it's a problem when the garbage guy comes. You know, he comes and picks the thing up, throws it in the back of the truck, and sometimes those things become airborne. So it's real important for us to close and seal off garbage bags tightly to try to make sure that we're not um, feeding that problem. Um, when we put those trucks on the highway and things blow out. I don't want to say that it's one, it's a one step process. It's really multiple things, but it starts with you and I. And so we need to make sure our stuff goes into the garbage and that the garbage is tied up tightly and then it's placed into the garbage bins so that it can be hauled off properly. Um, and that's our best defense in terms of trash. I really think that one of the big solutions to waste management is we need to start this recycling campaign. So not only do you need to be responsible and do we need to educate people, we also need to be recycling the products that we have so that those milk jugs don't float down the river because that's really a waste of our resources. And so we want to um, be able to reuse them for the same application or varied applications, which is going to help the environment, it's going to help us economically, it's going to help us aesthetically. Um, there's just multiple wins for that. So next time you think about throwing your trash out the window, remember, this is the only home we've got, so we've got to take care of it. We hope you've learned something new through this video, but more than that, we hope we've inspired you to make a difference in the community. This is Andrew and Abigail, over and out. Peace out, Girl Scouts. All right. I think that's good.